there were still patches of melting snow at Yorkshire Sculpture Park, causing streams of melt to run along the footpaths. I had made a questionable shoe choice, and my left foot was already sodden and cold. We had stopped off on our drive back from Leeds to see a couple of exhibitions here. The first, in the chapel, was Light Organ, a series of 40 plastic tubes with LED pixel strips inside that respond to the sound picked up by four microphones. I'm always interested in interactive artworks as I've made quite a few in my time. I personally favour works that react quickly and somewhat logically, that encourage deep experimentation through unexpected but rewarding feedback. As if you found yourself trying to communicate with a new, intelligent and playful alien species. Interactive art is challenging and difficult to do well, but highly rewarding and of course highly engaging. Light organ is fun and pretty. For me, I couldn't discover a common language quickly enough. It obviously responded to the noises we made, but I didn't understand what it was saying back to me. Without that deep immersion, I started feeling self-conscious. Escaping outside, the weather seemed to be slowly deteriorating. After a few minutes' walk, as I flailed my DJI Pocket 3 camera around again, it suddenly occurred to me that I had inadvertently fallen into the trap of overusing the gimbal. I realised I had been introducing camera movement into pretty much every shot, just because I can. Not only is this pointless, as it often doesn't add any more information to the shot, it isn't really my natural style. I favour long, often static shots that are composed and complex, so the viewer has time to explore them. I will have to work on this. I do like slow motion though. The other exhibition was Trap of the Truth by Erwin Worm. It's large, humorous work that seems a bit pastel and dumb to begin with, but the more you see, the more you realise how clever it all is. He works with everyday forms in unexpected scales and materials. He modifies real vehicles to bend our reality. He encourages a playful viewpoint that everything in the world can be material or subject for art, and probably should be as it manifests small, achievable moments of creative joy out of a dark world of single-use plastics and monoculture media. Do check out his series of one-minute sculptures. I highly recommend this exhibition. We left the park and drove south for hours. Past pretty electrical pylons and through bouts of heavy rain, rush hour traffic and darkening skies, until we reached the coast and the bright, welcoming Technicolor lights of Brighton Pier.